to Union Baseball Grounds and the game between the Cleveland Forest Cities and the Chicago White Stockings. Coming up to bat for Cleveland is Ezra Sutton, who every pitcher knows is a threat to hit the ball out of the infield whenever he steps up to the plate. He'll be facing George Zetline, whose mighty spitball has earned him the nickname Mucus Khan. The windup and the pitch. In there for a strike. No balls and a strike to the batter Sutton. Zetline rears back once again and delivers. Sutton swings and the ball is hit hard out of the infield and looks to be gaining altitude as it reaches the outfield, defying everything we know about gravity, which admittedly is very, very little at this point. High in the air toward left fielder Mark King, back he goes, but good. Heavens, the ball is in the bleachers! Ladies and gentlemen, the ball has transcended the field of play and landed in the crowd of civilians. From our vantage point, there do not appear to be any human casualties, but it is far, far too early to say. Players from both teams appear to be seeking shelter in the dugout so as to avoid the furious lightning that will inevitably accompany such a stunning event. It is with heavy heart that we pause now for these important messages from our sponsors. Hello, friends. Do like the Major League Baseballers do and start your day with the wholesome goodness that can only be found in a container of Cambridge Mixture Tobacco. Enjoy it in a bowl with water or by the handful straight out of the tin. Choosy moms choose Cambridge Mixture Tobacco for breakfast. For those of you just joining us, Cleveland Forest City's third baseman, Ezra Sutton, possessed by either the blessed power of our Lord and Savior, or by the Prince of Darkness himself, mashed an 0-1 pitch high into the air toward left fielder Mark King, where, to the shock and amazement of everyone in attendance, it continued its demonic or glorious trajectory into the outfield bleachers. Section 17 is in the process of being evacuated with stadium ushers advising fans to not touch or make direct eye contact with the ball. Several uniformed policemen appear to have formed a semicircle around the ball and... Yes, yes, the officers have opened fire on the ball. This looks to be a preventative measure to ensure that it does not take flight once again and wreak havoc upon this great city. Less clear is how the umpires will proceed with the game itself. They appear to be conferring with local authorities, while just a few feet away, medical personnel are administering leeches to the arms and shoulders of Ezra Sutton in an effort to rid his body of any and all possible demons. The ruling on the field from the note I've just been handed here is that Ezra Sutton will step to the plate once again and the previous hit will be stricken from the box score and later from recorded history. Before proceeding with the baseball match, we pause again for an important message from our sponsors. For over 30 years, J.E. Caldwell and Son has been America's most trusted name in wooden spoons, made from the same sturdy hickory used by Major League Baseballers. Mobs trust J.E. Caldwell spoons 
to stir up everything from liver soup to liver and potato soup. And of course, to discipline little Jimmy. J.E. Caldwell wooden spoons. Nothing smacks like a Caldwell. We are back, and pitcher George Zetline is winding up and ready to deliver to Cleveland's Ezra Sutton. The pitch is swung on and belted out of the infield. That ball heads high into the infield. Going back once again is left fielder Marty King. And by the baggy white cloak of our father, that ball is into the bleachers like a devilish twin of the pre- And Ezra Sutton has been shot dead by security. A startling course of action, but one that not many will argue with, given the overwhelming likelihood that the third baseman was some sort of warlock or otherwise powerful master of the occult. <laughs> 